Hello, I'm Dr. Elke Wagner from Crossover Design. Welcome to my interview series, The Tipping Point to Success. I interview German top designer to take a closer look at their path to success. Is there a decisive event that became the cornerstone of their success? To become a serious designer is a calling. I hope that through these interviews, you as a person interested in design will better understand the why of a designer. Why am I even doing this? Or as a young designer, you will get valuable suggestions for your own way. My interview today is with Murat Gunak. Murat is one of the most famous car designers and has shaped automotive design fundamentally. He worked at Ford and Mercedes-Benz and was the head of design of Peugeot and the Volkswagen Group, responsible for the design activities of all brands in the group. Later, he was away ahead of its time with the first affordable electric car Mia. Today, he wants to revolutionize delivery traffic in cities with the e-cargo bike Ono. He is an encourager for a better future. So now, a very special and warm welcome to you, Murat. I'm very glad and happy to be with you online today. Thank you very much, Elke. I'm very happy to be with you as well. That's nice. So to begin with, I would like to talk about your way through life and become the famous designer you are today. Let's go back and have a look at your youth and childhood. You are born in Istanbul in Turkey and grown up in a small Turkish town, village. Were you already very creative as a child? <laughs> so how did that show? Did your parents specifically encourage your creativity or did any another person inspire you? Uh, yes, I'm born in uh, Istanbul. And uh, indeed, it uh, was a big influence on my life. First of all, because I lived in the Asian side and I had to go to school to the European side because Istanbul is the only capital in the world that is existing on two continents. Um, beside of that, at that time uh, in Turkey, there have been only American cars, you know, big American yes. fenders, you know, and lots of chrome. And um, yeah, this was the culture I lived in. And um, beside of this, of course, later uh, the art of the Osmanian, the tiles, the colors, you know, the ornamentation made a big influence on my cultural thinking, I believe. So early as a child, you always saw these details and the beautiful buildings in Istanbul, or can you remember how it was? Uh, yes, uh, I think it was not that I really understood but living as a, as a child in a big capital like Istanbul with this uh, uh, full of different cultures, religions, colors, uh, the smell of the market and everything, the sea, the sky, um, I think it had a big, big influence on me. And of course, uh, the, the colors of the city are completely different from Europe. Yeah, this, mm. and, 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 Without knowing at that time, I'm sure that it made a big influence uh, on my thinking and of my feeling for colors and forms. <laughs> I think so. I can imagine. Um, and how was it during your school days in Turkey? Did you realize you, yourself that you have this creative talent or did perhaps any teacher encourage you? Not really. <laughs> I, I was uh, in an Austrian school in Istanbul, 
um, which was a very tough school. Uh, there was not much creativity really. Um, but later when we came to Germany, we came to Germany when I was 18, uh, 16, sorry, we came when I was 16, we came to Germany. And for some reason, uh, I started sketching cars <laughs> all the time. And uh, I, in fact, I wanted to create my own car company. This is how, how everything started. So this started in the age of 16, this car? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so, so how did it come that you emigrated to Germany? Uh, my parents moved to Germany. My father uh, was a doctor and he came to Germany and yeah, we as the family, the obvious story, we as a family uh, came to follow him. And um, yeah, it was, a, it, was a, it was a big change because everything was so disciplined. <laughs> <laughs> the colors have been different, you know. The school was different. The cars have been different because already here have been small cars, different than the American cars and the culture was so different. And um, it inspired me a lot. And I uh, started sketching cars. I don't know, I was really patient about them and I loved them. And yeah, this was, was really cool. So these were already cars of your fantasy. These were not- Yes. Turkish cars or no 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 cars of my mostly sport cars of course. <laughs> <laughs> yes. This is how it started. So and then you graduated in Germany and uh, yes, but uh, I graduated graduated school in Germany, Abitur. And uh, then um, I wanted to become car designer or somebody who's doing something with cars. And uh, I had a big idol. Um, this was uh, Monteverdi in Switzerland. And Peter Monteverdi was at that time uh, a Swiss businessman who was creating his own sports cars. Oh. Uh, very, very premium, very beautiful design, very careful design. And it was my dream to become like Peter Monteverdi. <laughs> so I wrote him a letter and uh, he really answered me. Right. And he invited, yeah, it was lots of luck. And he invited me to Switzerland and uh, uh, there I worked for a couple of weeks and later again for a couple of months in his company. And this was my start to professional life. And in, in fact, it was a key, uh, uh, it was a key um, experience of my life because I was still a 18 or 17 or 18 and um, had not much experience of, of business life. And he asked me to sketch, to make him a rendering for a car that he wanted to present to um, investors. Wow. And he trusted me and he said, you can do it and I trust you, but you have to finish it. And Sunday you go back home to Germany, you finish it. And Sunday I will send the driver and he will pick it up and you have to be finished. <laughs> wow, great. Yeah, it was very funny. And then I went home and I had no idea what to do. And I looked to all the car magazines and I copied and I tried to make it and then uh, really at exact at the hour a driver came to my house to my room <laughs> it was not house to my room he took the drawing and he gave me an envelope with the pay with money it was the first time that I earned money by design it was a great feeling yeah wow <laughs> that's how it started wow so, and this was before you started to study design? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, very good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, how did it come that you went to Kassel? You studied there at the Academy of Fine Art in Kassel. But yeah. I don't think that they have car design or do No, no. Um, then I wanted to really work for Monteverdi, but he said to me, uh, 
the most important for your future is you have to study. You know, you have to make an Abschluss in Universität, universities. Otherwise, you will always be unsatisfied and you will have not a good education. So he encouraged me and I went to Kassel because uh, when we came first time to Germany, we lived in Kassel, so I knew Kassel. So I went to the university in Kassel and studied industrial design. Oh, great. <laughs> and um, was there something special you get out, you got out of this period? Um, was yeah. that support or influenced you or how was it? Uh, to be honest, I was very disappointed because at that time in Germany, uh, most of the design universities had been very dry. Mm. There was not much creativity. There was, it was so engineering like, and it was so made not so much joy. Mm. And I changed then from industrial design to furniture design in Kassel. Wow. And there I found, a, uh, I, had, I had a wonderful professor, Professor Hans L. He um, was a quite famous for architecture and furniture and he was a very artistic person, uh, very philosophic. And he said to me, Murat, Uh, to study design is not the right thing for you. You shall do something more creative. And he uh, advised me and teached me and, um, and educated me for um, music and opera and stage. So I became a stage designer at the end. And I worked then in Kassel at the Opera House. Oh, that was it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it all happened like this. I don't know. It's not wow. It's just <laughs> what life made it. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I think it's good to have all these different, um, different paths. Yeah, yeah. And um, but then after that, you went um, to you went to um, London and studied there. Um, design. Yeah. You had a scholarship. Yeah. How did that yeah. come? Um, I, as I told you, I worked then in the Staatsopera in Kassel, and um, but um, I um, realized that I was always still sketching cars. <laughs> And I was looking to, all, to cars, and uh, it, it was very strong. So I decided to try to go to the Royal College of Art in London, which at that time, and still is, I think, the best car design school in the world. Oh, okay. But at that time, uh, it was very, very difficult to become a place at the Royal College. First of all, you needed, a, you had to show your portfolio to the Royal College and get uh, um, accepted. And, but this was not enough. You needed a sponsorship from a car company. Without a sponsorship from a car company, the college did not uh, give you a place to study. Um, so I applied on uh, Ford Motor Company because I knew Ford, Ford Köln. Um, they gave uh, sponsorships to the Royal College of Art and then I showed my portfolio and they Uh, accepted me and uh, I went to the Royal College of Art and did my master in automotive design in London. Wonderful. Uh, uh, that was good. <laughs> I think London was also a very impressive city, also with a lot of influence. Yes, it was. Um, and the Royal College of Art is again um, a university with uh, a lot of people from so many different countries of the world. And um, The, the system of the college is that differently to Germany at that time is that your work is only be judged if you do it at the college. You cannot do work at home and bring it back. Oh. So it forces the people to be in the college 
and it forces the people to work together. And every project that the students are doing is a competition. So there's always a winner and a loser and something in between. So this is a very, very hard education because at the one hand you, are, uh, you have friendships with, your, with the other students in your class. Mm -hmm. But at the other end, you are in a permanent competition because if you win, you win. If you lose, you lose. And um, this, and you only can, and, and your work must be done in the college with the others together. So it is a, it was an amazing, amazing education to learn how to work in a team with people, but still compete mm -hmm. and try to be better. And uh, and yeah, this is, this is maybe one of the most uh, important uh, education that the Royal College of Art is doing. And I think that uh, automotive design, it's a very competitive area. Yeah, so it, is, it is very competitive. Yeah, it is very competitive because uh, it's, it, in automotive design, you cannot explain the design by speaking. Mm. You have to draw, you have to illustrate. And it is of course very difficult to illustrate a product that is first of all so complicated by the shape, but it has also, you know, metal, glass, rubber, chrome, tires, uh, color. And to make this that you compete with your design when you put it onto the wall, when you are a young designer, you have to be very, very competitive and extremely strong. Uh, otherwise, you have no chance to, to make something. Uh, yeah, it is a very tough job. And of course, what makes it so difficult is that everybody has an opinion about cars. <laughs> <clears throat> and among your teachers, there were the designers Claude Lobo and Patrick Le Clément. They are also very famous um, car designers. Did they have an influence or it was, and um, what am I thinking? What do such top designers, personalities bring to the table for a young student? Yeah, that's a good question. It depends really on the people. It, uh, in my experience, it does not depend on the position, but it depends on the character mm. of the people. There are some designers I know with very high reputation. Um, they're very egoman. Mm. They care about themselves and they turn everything around themselves, you know. And then there are people who are very successful, who are much more open to young talents and they see talents and they force talents and they support talents. And, and I had uh, often the pleasure and the luck to meet these kind of people. Mm -hmm. uh, it was just luck. And Patrick Lecamont and Claude Lobo, Patrick Lecamont at that time was the head of the uh, design center of Ford in Köln. Uh, and um, Claude Dubois was a studio manager. And uh, well, these two people first sent me to the Royal College and then they gave me a job at Ford. So they have been very good to me. Um, so um, they brought you to the job after your graduation? Or... Yes, yes. At the Royal College at that time, it, it, it was the rule that the company sponsored you they paid the college and your living wow. fees, but then you had to work at least two years in the company. If they, if they took you, sometimes they didn't take, but if they took. <laughs> and um, after that, you moved to Mercedes-Benz and worked there for eight years. Then you moved to Peugeot <laughs> to become in 1994 the head of design. After that, you returned again to Mercedes-Benz and held the position of the vice president for all passenger cars. 
after that you, <laughs> you became the head of design of the Volkswagen group and responsible for the design activities of all brands in the group. So in your career you have shaped automotive, automotive design <laughs> um, very significant. Is yeah. it necessary for a top designer to change the companies so often or uh, how did it come all this movement? <laughs> I don't know if it's normal to change. I don't know. It happened in my life. Um, I think to be to be to be to be uh, honest, I never really thought about uh, how my career would be. Uh, I did not want to spend time and energy of constructing my future or something. But I uh, very much believed uh, in, the, in the power of, of creativity mm -hmm. and in the power of imagination, you know? And uh, I always did, I think, I don't know if I did, but I think I always did what I thought is to be done. So from my point of view, this happened that um, while I was at Mercedes, uh, I, um, uh, it happened that I got a quite good reputation in the car industry. And, you know, and I was young, I had not much concern and I wanted to make a good life. And uh, I was, it was very charming when other car companies asked me to join them, to support them, you know? It's mm -hmm. just when you are asked to do something and people want you and they offer you something, um, then it's sometimes uh, blending you. Yeah, but of course you're then in a good position. You can yeah. uh, tell them, oh, I would like to have a bit more of money or a better. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So and uh, my family supported me a lot, and uh, yes, then we moved to Paris, and from Mercedes to Paris, and um, it was a wonderful time, and uh, it was the big change of Peugeot. And uh, we could make some really beautiful cars and good selling cars and reposition the brand. And from this job um, uh, in the automotive world, I became uh, the image that I am a, I'm a good person if a company wants to change their design language, if mm -hmm. they have to change their brand image, if they have to change their style, like a Zanira. I don't know the English word. And because I got this image as a Zanira, uh, so many car com companies asked me to come and join. And this is why I moved so much. <laughs> Did you ever write yourself to a company, oh, I want to work for no. you? I don't think so. Uh, the, yes, the first time to Monteverdi, uh, but the, from then never again. <laughs> Great. <laughs> really a good position. Yeah, <laughs> lucky position. <laughs> you know. So um, after that started your career path to an entrepreneur, in fact. Yeah. Because 2007, you left the Volkswagen Group <clears throat> and became your first entrepreneur. I just <clears throat> read in an interview a quote from you about it. At that time, however, there was not enough space for my visions. I had the choice. Do I continue as before or do I go my own way? So how did that start with your own visions? Was it a slow way or did you have a special <laughs> aha um, experience? Can you remember? Yeah, I can remember it was a very, very difficult time. Mm. Uh, and it was a very, uh, you can say it, I can say it was a very difficult and tough decision. But the truth is, 
it was a very naive decision. <laughs> um, you know, meanwhile, I was father of four children and um, I had this extremely high position at the Volkswagen Group. Um, and, um, you know, I lived every day by creating a new car to sell better, you know, and um, I mean, people were working so hard to, to change a grip or a door handle or I don't know what, mm. not only designers, yeah, the whole, the whole company. And it, it was just a repetition, repeating, repeating, repeating. And at that time, because uh, of my age, probably, yeah, maybe I had midlife crisis, I don't know. <laughs> uh, but because of my children, I was thinking a lot about the future of um, the planet. planet. Mm -hmm. um, and this was 2000, and it started 2006, 2005, 2006. And um, Yeah, it started in my, my mind that uh, if we want, if I want to do something good for the planet, uh, I have to think what I can do. And the only thing I can do is do something with cars. Mm. So I reflected that it would be wonderful for the car industry and in special for Volkswagen to invest some of the power of creativity, of engineering, of strategy, of money, to think of a new kind of mobility, of a clean mobility. Mm. Um, but if you remember 2006, 2007, nobody, no, nobody and no car company was interested in changing the automotive industry you know it was a, it was a wonderful business that it was so i started suffering because i could not um, position my idea and then i uh, with with uh, yeah lots of reflecting and a lot of thinking and sharing with my family I decided uh, to go my own way and I left the security of the big company uh, and and all the glamour uh, and started my own business and I, I'm saying it was it was maybe naive because I did not realize what it meant to build up our own company you know when you are in a good position as a designer in a in a comp in a car company uh, you are in such a good position you know you have you have your cars you have your salary you have your status it's a dream job yeah uh, it's, it's a privilege and especially to work with the volkswagen group was wonderful time um and I did not realize when I made the step what, what it means as a hard job to build up your own business. It's, um, it's really tough, but it was a good decision and I'm happy about it. <laughs> also, yes, I, I think uh, as car designer, you need, always need a lot of money for your project. It's not like yeah. building a new table or designing furniture. No, no, it's a, it's a, you need a lot of money, you need a lot of investment uh, and you need uh, infrastructure. I mean, you need a company, you need a f f uh, production <laughs> thing. You need, uh, it's the investment is enorm. And, um, you know, I always keep saying when a designer uh, designs a fridge, or a lamp or a mm -hmm. table. Um, then the person who buys this 
table or lamp or fridge, uh, buys it and puts it at his, at his home. And when people come to visit him, then he can show it and he can share this new table. Mm. It's very private. But uh, a car is not private. Uh, when people drive with their car outside, everybody can see them. Mm -hmm. and, and when somebody drives a car, people judge the driver by the car. You know, if he has taste, if he's rich, if he's poor, if he's stupid, I don't know, people judge the people. So, and when you then think then, then uh, design of a car is mostly finished three years before production in a fast living life as we have, three years is a long, long time and so many things can change. So you have to make an investment in something that needs a lot of years to come to the market. You don't know how the market will be. You have a lot of investment risk. So it is a very, very challenging job for the decision maker in the car industry, you know, the board members, the marketing people, the designers. And to bring a product like this onto the market is a big, big, big uh, challenge and risk. Mm. even for a big car company. And um, you did two um, electric car projects by your own, to my information. It was the Mindset Emotion hybrid car and after that the Mia electric concept. Yeah. Um, so the first car was in uh, Switzerland. You went to Luzern. How did that come? Yeah, yeah. It was good fun. <laughs> there was an investor who, who, who invested the project and a couple of friends of mine and myself decided to design this vehicle. Um, we wanted to show that it is possible to create, not only design, but to create a, a beautiful looking lightweight car that is uh, fully electric. It was fully electric with a range extender. Um, because again, it was 2007, nobody really thought about uh, an electric vehicle. Mm -hmm. Tesla was just starting, you know, but the big car companies, none of them was doing something. Um, so we designed this car to prove uh, that it is possible to make a good electrical car and to make our reputation in the, in the industry as, a, as freelance people. And then the Mia came because the prototype of the mindset was built in France, in the old Hurliers factory. Hurliers is a supplier for the automotive industry. And uh, we created the idea to say, well, when we want to do something good for the planet with mobility, we have to create a, a car that is affordable. Mm. because if it is not affordable and there are not many on the road, it does not make any influence on the air or on the better living. So we created the Mia, Mia Electric. It was a beautiful little project. Um, and we made it really from a white sheet of paper to a production car with homologation, crash test, everything. Um, and um, uh, I think... 20,000 or something cars have been sold all over Europe. And, um, but then for difficulties, also political difficulties, um, we had to stop it. Unfortunately, it was very sad. Maybe also the product was too early, mm -hmm. but as you might have, uh, if you, maybe you have the information, the MIA will come back again. The production is just restarting maybe this or next year. Wow, that would be great. Yeah, it's wonderful. I'm so happy about it. Yeah. But uh, are you still part of that project or? No, as a designer. If something has to be done as a designer, then I will be part of the project. Oh, I crossed the fingers. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> And um, after that, you did a lot of big and small uh, projects with your design studio, I think. Yeah, I, 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 I think. Yes, yes, I had my, I, until the uh, end of last year, I had my own design studio. 
uh, with a with, uh, couple of friends together and we have made a lot of interesting projects all on mobility, mm. car, cars, bikes, uh, motorbikes, but all only for transportation design and only with uh, no combustion engine. This was our claim. Yeah, and from that we started then the Ono. Yeah, and in the beginning of that project, when it still was called Tradebox, we met each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was wonderful to to meet you uh, and your stu and your design studio by the Tradebox project. I mean, we were looking for unusual and creative ideas on textiles. <laughs> and yeah. <laughs> and you were laughing a lot about me because I know so not much about cars. <laughs> that's right, that's right. But, but you know, I, 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 I can only say that um, I do appreciate the creativity of your design studio because you also work uh, interdisciplinar uh, and you come from, you know, the ornament ornamentic design and this is very strong because it's not so engineering driven mm -hmm. and you know if you have the creativity and you have the idea and you have a design the rest is homework to me so you can get engineers you can get cost people you can get production people but if you have engineers, cost people, production people, and organization people, but you have no creative idea, then it's useless. Mm. So therefore, with the trade box, we have been very happy to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> and you have your expertise. And uh, I think the work we did at the beginning was really remarkable and very impressive. Uh, and this made the ONO Made the Ono, made the trade box become Ono. Yes. I, it's really a great project. I love that. Thank you. And, and if money wasn't an issue, what further vision would you like to turn into a project? Oh, I have a, I have a, a dream. I have a dream, but uh, I would like to create a vehicle that uh, gets that drives by the power of light. Wow. This is a great vision. Yeah, maybe with Ono we can do it. We'll see. Yeah. And um, in fact, this leads me directly to my last point. If you have a personal review on your career path, you receive for success. Um, what do you see as your three special qualities that helped you succeed? You, you must judge this. You know me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <gasps> I respect life. I respect the nature. And I respect a lot of human beings. I think that's all. Mm -hmm. I'm also, you're a very good team player. And you're also, I would say this, always having a vision, like you told. This is <laughs> a great point, I think, point. Yeah, it's very important. If you have no aim, you don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. So, um, would you like to give any advice to young people who are interested to car design or who are already studying car design? No, really. Everybody has to find his way. <laughs> it needs a lot of luck and it needs a lot of discipline. If somebody wants to send me his portfolio, he can send it. Oh, that's great. <laughs> I like very much to, to support young talents if, if I can see that if I can see that they are willing and that they want to do something to change. 
uh, you know that um, yeah I'm very happy to to find young talents and if I can to support them this is great you're very generous <laughs> you thank you for this thank you for this chance to talk to you that's very kind of you I'm very happy no problem and is there anything else you would like to add to this interview no <laughs> <laughs> It's all fine. I wish you all the best. It's a good idea. And I hope that so many people are, will watch your broadcast, uh, Elke. Thank you very much. Yeah, I thank you. It's really very wonderful to speak with you always, not only in interviews. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Have a good thank day. Thank you very much too. And I hope that all the people watching this interview right now also watching all the other interviews because they are really very wonderful designers and you will learn a lot, I think. Cool. So I will do it. <laughs> <laughs> bye. Until next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Elke. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.